Hey everybody, hope you are doing super good. Now, I was asked a question in the Academy on how to create this type of effect with inside a flood of flow. And what we have on the screen here is a mobile application, which has kind of just got some sample kind of uh, containers there with some text in there. And as I just kind of scroll these to the top, you can see now that we've got this banner image that kind of just kind of naturally fades away. And then as I sort of scroll up, I can keep going to the bottom there of the list. And as I bring this kind of back in, the image then kind of comes back in. So it's a kind of quite a common uh, kind of look that you would see on a number of different applications that's available in the stores. So how do you create that in Flutterflow? Well, Flutterflow does not support that out the box. So what you have to do is you have to kind of uh, create a custom widget, which is kind of a wrapper for other components that you would have with inside your Flutterflow application. And of course, those components within inside your application can have all of the behaviors and all the typical stuff that you would do with inside Flutterflow, but you kind of need to use a kind of a custom widget there to kind of wrap all of these widgets together. And of course, then you can then add that custom widget to your uh, directly to your pages. Now, it doesn't kind of give you the look and feel that you would like to have in Flutterflow, but at least it allows you to kind of create these kind of looks for your application. Certainly, it's great if you're creating like little detail pages and all that kind of stuff. So um, let's Let's now walk through how I have done it. Of course, I'll make the, uh, the the sample available in the link in the description. Please do go and have a look there, explore what I'm showing you, and then you'll be able to do something very similar in your applications. So let's now head over to Flutterflow. Let's have a look here. So you can see here that I've got a couple of pages in my uh, kind of my project here. I've got the home page, and you can see here I've got this kind of what looks like this custom widget that we've got here. So you can see no kind of uh, widget representation here. I'm using the Flutterflow sort of desktop version here. So you're going to kind of see that you're not going to see anything other than this kind of placeholder, which looks like it. But rest, rest assured that I've actually have got the custom widget on this particular page here. And I kind of got the grid detail page. Now what'll happen is if I just show you back here, if I click on any of these it will take you then to the detail page and bring you back so it's a kind of the typical kind of behavior that you would have on any of your applications if I go back here now how have I implemented this well as I said I'm creating a custom widget and what I'm doing is I've set up that custom widget to pass in this particular banner image this is the image that's going to sit at the top and of course you can do all of the regular stuff that you would do in Flutterflow at this point in terms of customizing this but I've just created this very basic image which is a uh, an asset that I've loaded with inside the uh, the project itself and I'll just reference that here using the image widget here and then of course I've then got this grid items component which is again is that kind of that scrollable kind of grid view that you see there so it's kind of just um, the key thing to point out here is I've got the grid view here um, I've shrink wrapped this down here so it's kind of matches the kind of the dimensions here of all of the containers that's currently on this particular page here but again I've just set this up as you typically would do any particular grid with inside Flutterflow so you can kind of customize that yourself I've got a little bit of padding here just to bring this off the edges here. So of course this on the actual uh, kind of home page, uh, sorry on the grid, sorry on the on the home page would kind of be uh, kind of loaded into then the custom widget. And how does that happen? Well, this custom widget that we got here um, has a number of input parameters which have been set up. And one is the banner image itself. So here I've just selected the component. This just here. This then passed in then as a widget. And now this is using more recent features in uh, Flutterflow uh, version five and then here I've also passing in the primary content which in this case is the grid items components so I've kind of created probably a little bit of reusability here in this particular page because there's nothing specific about the kind of the page that's kind of the custom widget that's going to show all of this stuff that you could pass in any type of primary content you want you could pass in other kind of components or whatever you want but here I've just passed in this grid items component and there is my banner image there just at the top so let's have a look then at this scrolling fading banner then so if I just move over here to the custom code and I've created this custom widget called well just scrolling fading banner and um, here you can see that I'm not going to kind of tell you too much about the code here because you can kind of copy and paste this into your own um, but really you can see here that I've uh, created a couple of required parameters here now this is the banner image and this is the primary content that you've seen previously and these are represented here on the right hand side here as parameters and you can see here that the banner image is of type widget builder and then my primary content is also a type widget builder it's not nullable I'm always going to expect to be passing these in and that as as easy as it comes and of course if you are building up your own version of this here then you can create more parameters here you can add them just here and you can make sure that you also put in the additional line here to represent the the one or the extra parameter that you're passing in. 
And then so the rest of it is really just more about setting up the kind of the code that kind of does everything that we need to. It is using here kind of con uh, like a, a scroll controller here to kind of uh, kind of detect that position that I'm actually scrolling up as well and, and the, the actual fading of that banner image that's at the top. And all the logic is kind of contained in here. Um, and you can see really the, the key bits to point out here is the actual uh, widgets that are specified itself. So here is this one here, this background image, uh, sorry, image, which is in this flexible space bar is represented by widget banner image and that's just getting a reference up here to the to the actual widget that we're passing into this particular custom code and then similarly down at the bottom here the kind of the main kind of body part of the actual uh, the kind of the custom uh, component or sorry sorry the custom uh, sort of widget is this widget and it's the primary content here so really I'm just kind of using these two widgets down in the main body of the code so as always with this if you're not kind of a code or anything like that then I highly recommend that you could probably copy this into maybe something like ChatGPT and say, you know, please describe to me what's going on and it will kind of comment everything out for you. So you get a, a better idea to kind of learn how all of this coding um, is kind of put together. But again, I don't really want to go too deep here into what the actual code is doing because you can kind of just sort of look at this and query this yourself and kind of get an idea what's going on. But pretty well much what you can do here is you can copy all of this into a brand new uh, sort of custom widget, paste in all of this code for you. Obviously, you need to make sure you define the parameters first. Uh, stick this little button up here which adds the boilerplate code and then literally you could then copy this uh, this kind of this code here and paste that over the top to whatever boilerplate has been set. Now there's one little bit here to just to make you aware of and that is this particular little uh, option this little tick box here. Now um, for me I kind of raise this as a bit of a bug in Flutterflow actually because I still really don't like the way this kind of works but if I was to keep this unchecked here and I'm using these widget functions and it doesn't compile correctly with inside a flood of flow um, it, it, and it's to do with the use of this of this kind of this uh, kind of type here of the widget builder it's, it's, it is a known uh, kind of I won't say feature but a node issue in flood of flow but they kind of say look you get a work you work around it by just uh, excluding it from actual compilation so something about the use of this particular kind of type here that causes a problem with a kind of flood of flow kind of compiling this particular custom widget so just bear that in mind you need to make sure you keep that ticks of a what that will uh, typically mean is that you need to make sure your code in here um, will actually check out, will actually run correctly. So just bear that one in mind that if you're kind of customizing this, you'll find that it may not, Flowflow may not report problems with your code, but when it, when it comes to runtime, you will see all of the horrible errors that get displayed that you would, uh, that, that just look ghastly with inside the, uh, the simulator. So just bear that one in mind um, there that when you're actually uh, playing with this particular code. But other than that, that is pretty well much it. There's there's one little bit that I just want to point out actually just before we do finish. You'll notice within the sample here that I've kind of removed the kind of all of like the, the, the status information that's at the top of a typical kind of mobile application. And um, I've done that because um, I've actually got a sample in the academy that shows you this specifically. But you can see I've got this custom action here called handle overlay, uh, overlays. I just, just copy this uh, into a brand new custom custom action called uh, handle overlays, nothing that's needed on the right hand side here. And then what you need to do, you need to go to your main dot dart here, and then you add that particular custom action here. You can just put the plus here and you can select handle overlays. And then this, this code will then be kind of executed when your application fires up and that will remove those kind of those status indicators there from the top of your application. And uh, oh, just one other uh, point to mention is that you'll notice that I've removed here on the home page, I've taken away the safe areas here. Now that just really means that if I now scroll to the top here, you can see now that I go right to the top, it goes underneath the kind of the, the knockout there for the camera at the top of the, the application. Um, so uh, if you didn't have that, then of course it means you're gonna kind of get a gap at the top here when you sort of go up. So I've made this like almost like a full screen kind of application. So just bear that one in mind that that's another a little change that I've made here. Now I've not done that to then the grid page because I do want to respect the safe area at the top there. So I want this to make sure that the detail page sits below the notch that we've got there inside the, the application. Otherwise you'll find this could be full screen and then sit right up here underneath that little notch. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of uh, 
point that out. So um, hopefully that's useful um, as a kind of a general kind of guiding principle here. Um, it's a very, very simple example, but um, I think what could, could be done here is this example could be kind of uh, padded out a lot more to then use data that's coming down from databases and showing that with inside the grid items component. So um, um, if you want me to extend this particular example, then uh, please do let me know. So hopefully you'll find that useful and um, I'll see you then in the next video. Oh,